In this lesson, we're going to look at a few functions that are available in the Function Browser. The Function Browser will only appear when I hit the Equal button, or go into Create Formula. Within the Functions Browser, all the functions available in Numbers are listed, and they're divided into several categories. As I select each function, it's explained below with a definition and samples. From this search field, I can enter a term and see the functions that have to do with it. If I type in average, I get four functions dealing with averages. In this sheet, I have a set of times listed in minutes and seconds. I got these to show up like this by using the duration data format and then setting the units to minutes and seconds. I can adjust how the times are displayed using the style menu here. In the first footer row, I have the column total displayed with a simple column sum function. Numbers knows the data is displayed as durations, or times, and adds the minutes and seconds correctly. In the second footer row, I want to convert the minutes totals here to hours. To do that, I can use a duration function. I'm going to click in this first hours cell, hit the equal key, and I can locate the duration category here in the function browser. Several functions are available here, like duration to days, hours, milliseconds, and minutes. I want to use duration to hours. So I'll select it and click the Insert Function button. Over in the cell, the duration function is added. And in this dark gray oval, it's asking me for a duration to be entered. I want to enter the minutes duration in the cell above, so I'll click there. That's it. Click the check mark, and the result of 4.16 hours is returned. So that's 249 minutes and 38 seconds converted to hours. Now I can paste in the duration function to convert all of these to hours. Next, we're going to use a lookup function to access data from a separate table. So here in this spreadsheet, I have the same data as I did in our units and cost sheet from earlier. But the costs of each item are now on a separate table. So to get the total here, I need to look up the data from the products table here and use it with the sold data in the sales table. So I'll click on this first cell and hit Equal. I want to start by taking the data in the first sold cell here and multiplying it. So I have sold paper times. Now I'm just going to type in look and the lookup function becomes available. Click and numbers gives me some guidance with search for, search where, and results values. So what am I going to search for? In this case, it's paper. I need to click on paper in the sales table and search for that in the products table. These two items need to be spelled the same for this to work. Numbers is going to look for the exact word paper. My result value of the search is going to be the cost here in the products table. Enter that, and here's my total. Now I can copy and paste this function in for the other items, which number fills in correctly. I can adjust the prices here in the products table, and that change will be reflected in the results for the total. I can also add new items. I'll add a printer to the products table.
when I add a row in the sales table, I get an alert right away that a numbers is looking for some data here. So if I enter printer and say 8 were sold, I get a new total. So using separate tables and the lookup function to access the data in them is a good idea when you have data that might be used in more than one table or will be changing often. Lastly, let's look at the if function. Let's say we have a sales goal to sell at least 50 of each of these items in a given time period. So I'm going to add a new column here named goal. Here in the first cell, I'm going to enter an if function. I'm going to grab the number sold and say that that needs to be greater than 50. If that's true, I'll get a result that says yes, and if not, no. Notice that I have to put the words yes and no inside quotes. If I don't, when I start typing, numbers start searching for functions. When I have that all entered, I get a yes for paper. Paste in the function to get the rest of the results. So that's a look at a few functions and numbers. Use the function browser to find functions that might be useful to you and learn how to use them. The spreadsheets used in this lesson will be available to download if you want to experiment with them. Next up, we'll look at conditional highlighting.